don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Giving a shout out to everybody, YouTube family, Facebook family. Hope everybody's doing well and is listening. Because once again, I'm not going to give you a feel-good sermon. I'm going to talk about things that most preachers don't like talking about. And I'm going to talk about these issues that all of us deal with. And if you're looking for a feel-good message, you might as well just click off of the page right now. Now, I want to talk about the body for a moment, the temple. Now, I want you to just fast forward to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm just going to talk about verses 19. And 20. And we all know this is Paul talking to the Corinthians, trying to help them solve their church problems because they was doing some stuff. And I'm addressing the church right now in this video, but I hope people in the world are listening also because people sitting in these churches pretty much ain't too much different from the ones sitting in the world. The only difference is they got a seat every Sunday. Most of them. I'm not going to say everybody. And Paul is pretty much telling them how they need to stop sinning. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 6, 19 and 20, it says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? And then it says, You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body what it says. Glorify God in your body. And it, will, it was talking about this sexual immorality also. See, most people when they talk about the body, oh, stop drinking, stop smoking. Well, they go way past that, people. This is your temple. First of all, the Bible do teach you, you don't suppose to mark your body. And then it tells us in Romans, Paul, again, I believe that you should treat your body a living sacrifice to be holy and acceptable. This is why a Christian is supposed to represent the Lord in a special way, a beautiful way, not a worldly way. Now, let me get off into the church just for a moment. Deacons, the Bible taught you how you're supposed to be. It told you don't be a drunk. It tells you how your wife supposed to be also. See, this is another problem, and people don't teach on the way a pastor supposed to be. Well, his wife got to have qualifications also. A deacon and his wife have to have qualifications also. But we seem like we are overlooking these qualifications because we allow any and everything to go on in these churches and want to call the church and the house of God and the Holy Spirit. Now, ain't no Holy Spirit, no Holy Ghost. You got that devil up in there. The body. You can't be a drunk deacon being at church drunk. To these musicians who like to go to church high, oh yeah, I'm talking to y'all. I hope y'all looking at this video. I ain't trying to down talk. I'm just trying to help you and encourage you to do better. I see too many musicians going to church high, smell like weed. Time you walk in the door, it's all over the sanctuary. To these preachers with this love of money, it need to be stopped. That love of money is the root of all evil. I'm talking about Paul once again. See, when Paul was addressing these letters, you notice where they was going to the churches? The book of Revelation started out, what was it talking about? Then he told John, write these things. To the who? Churches. Seven churches. And I'm telling you in this video, churches, you better straighten up because the judgment will start there first. This ain't my word. This is the word of God. You think I'm lying? Open it up and read it and study it and get a clear understanding. So when we tie this all in about the body, now we know people in the world, they don't want to hear this, but I hope they listen it and that somebody might be helped. All this shooting this dope up your arm. And some of these folks think that because they don't smoke or drink, they better than somebody else. Let me say this. Just because 
you don't smoke or drink. You ain't better than a person that smoke and drink. So you're not smoking and drink. Well, you still horn around. You still lying. You still committing adultery. So what make you think you better than a man that drank or the woman that still sat in her body or whatever? You still horn around yourself. Paul was instructing these Corinthians to get right. Come out of the dark and start living in the light. See, Paul knew how it was to be a great persecutor of the Christians. But see, Paul had to be knocked down on his butt. And I'm going to say this in this video. A lot of y'all need to be knocked down on your butt. Hard. You need to get knocked down and get taken all the way out. See, you can't have served God. I was telling K. Rand the other, when he was over the other day, I said, man, oh, we was on the phone. That's why certain people just going to get taken out anyway when they ain't doing nothing with their life. I'm going to go back to the scripture. People don't get this on the scripture. When it says God won't put no more on you than you can bear. When he when you he won't let you be tempted, he won't let you be tempted no more than you have to be. When he gives you a way out, sometimes that means taking you out of here, people. Because if you're gonna keep smoking dope, you're gonna keep killing folks, robbing folks, then what's the purpose of your life? Paul was specifically talking to these churches. This is my temple. I need to represent Christ. Do JT have his body all marked up? No. And I never will. Do I get mad at people that I see with tattoos all over their body? No. And I never will. See, I'm just a messenger. I'm not the enforcer. And we seem to forget about this body. It don't. Let me go back to the scripture. Do you not know that that body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, God created this body, not man. That's why God is not a man. He, God created man, so God is past man. That's why I don't put, I try not to say God is a man. Now, we know Christ walked this earth in his flesh. When you look at this, it says, you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. You were bought with a price. This old song called, I am redeemed. Who bought with a price? What you talking about price? Well, when Jesus gave his life on that cross, when he died for you and me, all of us, not just Israel. I'm tired of people saying that. Well, he paid the price. But the sad thing is the way we are representing, I know people don't want to hear the truth, but the way we are representing the Lord, calling people calling themselves Christians and still in a devilish way, no, you ain't representing the Lord. You can't even say you love your own brother. The Bible said you can't say you, you, you love God and you don't love your own brother. You a liar. You a liar and the truth ain't in you no kind of way. So when you go on to church musicians and, and other folks smoking all this weed, getting high before you go to church, think about it. All these preachers sleeping around with these women, all these deacons hauling around with these women, better be careful. Oh, I'm finna hit on this too, homosexuals. You're supposed to be made new in Christ. People need to quit getting in these, in these leadership positions. I'm going to say this bluntly because I don't care. Stop putting these homosexuals in position. Stop putting these crooked deacons in position. Stop voting these messed up pastors in these churches because I'm talking about the qualifications. People ain't even treating their body right. They ain't even got their own home in order. I see more deacons going to church with alcohol smelling like they just had a hangover. Calling themselves deacons. I believe Jesus, oh, I believe in the Bible. When it talk about choosing these deacons, it said find me. Was it seven good men? Not seven jacked up men. Put them on trial. See if they good. Then put them as a deacon. But nowadays, ain't nobody being put on trial. You see that messed up person, you put them in leadership anyway. How in the hell can you have a church operating with messed up deacons and messed up preachers 
and messed up music, minister of music and choir members. That ain't no church at all, people. That ain't no church at all. What is your church built on? The love of money? The house of God that became a comfortable place for sinners to stay the same and leave the same. So when you think about this body, it's not yours. It's not of your own. Well, most people can't get past this flesh. I don't know about y'all, but I want that glorified body, which Paul spoke about also. The glorified body. And you're punishing your body every day you wake up. You, you steady getting drunk. You can't even walk. Somebody got to tote you home. You so high as hell that you don't know where you are half of the time. I try to tell these youngsters down there, they smoking every... I mean, now drugs are so worse now. You got people making their own drugs. Putting in bombing fluid and weed. Cocaine and weed. Rolling it up. Smoking all these things, punishing your body. People keep winding up with lung cancer. Liver cancer. Cirrhosis of the liver. And then you want, when you get in the hospital, that's when you want to pray to God. And say, Lord, heal me. Why you let this happen to me, Lord? Lord, to tell you to punish your body. And then you wonder why you got all these diseases out there. You keep sleeping around long enough with folks you don't know, you might wind up catching herpes or AIDS. You might wind up dying, people. Sex and immorality. These things was going on in the church. Now let's fast forward to nowadays. You done got you done you done seen people done got busted having sex in the house of God. Good God Almighty. I won't reveal no names. Smoking weed in the sanctuary. What happened to take your shoes off? You on holy ground. Take off your sandals. You on holy ground. The ground ain't holy no more. Any and everything is going on in these churches. Paul wrote that letter to help them folks straighten up. That ain't the only letter Paul wrote, though, is it? And if you can get half of these preachers to come together and do things in the right way and start figuring out how to grow the right way, the sad thing is you don't get preachers together. You only see them come together at a funeral, unless they're on TV or something. If most preachers would go outside of their church and just go out to eat with another pastor and get along, have the true fellowship. But most preachers can't straighten up they self. I'm going to leave on that one. Be blessed.